chuẩn bị chúc các trường đi vào bạn thì được chỉ là tiền chúc mừng các trường So, you put the two C in the middle. This is a jump. This is a jump. This is a jump. This is a jump. So, Okay. 嗯，老师，我们的活动即将开始。So, ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, I would like to seek your cooperation in completing this webinar. Kindly ensure your device is in mute mode to avoid interruptions. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attentions. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on the topic Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, Industry Development and Professional Training. I am Yok Lu from ICCCM, your host for today. This webinar is organized by International Cultural Communication Center Malaysia, ICCCM, and co-organized by Changsha Aeronautical Vocationals and Technical College, China, and Simeo Rexen, Malaysia. Therefore, before we begin, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the following important representatives among our co-organizers. From Changsha Aeronautical Vocationals and Technical College, they are Vice President of Department of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Yan Tan, and Director of International Exchange Center, Mr. Chen Kai So from Senior Raksan, we have Dr. Shah Jahan bin Asana Kudi, the Center Director of Senior Raksan. And very importantly, our speakers today, who is the Dean of School of Aeronautics and Electromechanics, Professor Chen Lu. Thank you all for being here with us today. And thank you to all participants for attending this webinar. We hope you will learn a lot today and we will line up for you to be fruitful and engaging. Now, let us welcome the leaders of the co-organizing parties to deliver their opening speech. First, let us invite Ms. Yan Chan, the Vice President of the Department of Foreign Affairs from Changsha Aeronautical Vocationals and Technical College for giving the opening speech. 下面让我们有请长沙航空职业技术学院主管外事工作校领导副校长严灿女士致辞。尊敬的沙贾汉博士、马来西亚国际文化交流中心的各位领导，以及在会的各位同仁同学们，大家下午好。Dear Dr. Shah Jahan from Simo Raksam. Leaders from International Cultural Communication Center Malaysia, fellow colleagues and students who are joining the webinar, a very good afternoon to you. Wushi 和参加本期培训班的全体学员表示热烈的欢迎，并向基于此次研修班大力支持的马来西亚国际文化交流中心表示衷心的感谢。I'm Yan Chan, Vice President of Changsha Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College. It is my pleasure to deliver an opening remark and meet with you over the cloud. First of all, on behalf of our college. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the students who are participating in this event. I would also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Ms. Nisi Bai, Chairman of International Cultural Communications Centre in Malaysia, who gave great support to this collaboration. Over the years, China's and ASEAN have established a strategic partnership for peace and prosperity. We are good neighbors, good partners, and good friends. The exchanges and cooperation in the field of education have been fruitful, and we are constantly expanding and deepening it. Under the enthusiastic facilitation by the International Cultural Communication Centre Malaysia, our college is to hold this webinar on the topic of UAV technology applications which is beneficial to promote mutual understanding, learning and friendship among us as co-organizers. Hunan is the country of Maozhu. Changsha is the country of Hunan. 
，是中国最具幸福的城市之一。长沙航院是经中国教育部批准成立的全日制公办高职院校，拥有五十年的办学历史，现有在校学生一万余人，教职工七百余人。聚焦航空是我院的鲜明特色，开设的二十二个与航空紧密相关的专业。主要培养航空产业发展所需的技术技能人才，开放、融合、求实、创新是我院的发展理念。通过国际教育交流与合作，推动彼此之间的资源互通、经验互鉴，是我们的宗旨。Hunan Province is the hometown to Chairman Mao Zedong. And Changsha City, the provincial capital of Hunan, is one of the happiest cities in China. Changsha Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College is a full-time public higher vocational college approved by the Ministry of Education of China. It has a 50-year of history and currently has more than 10,000 students and more than 700 faculty members. Aviation is a key featured program of our college. There are 22 aviation-related majors, which mainly train technical and skilled professionals required for the development of the aviation industry. Opening up to the world is a fundamental vision of our college. Through international exchanges and cooperation in education. We aim to promote sharing of resources, knowledge, and experience. Wuhan基因应用技术具有广阔的发展空间与应用前景。该专业是我院重点发展建设的专业，具有优优良的办学条件。本次研讨由我院陈律教授，也是我院二级学院航空机电学院的院长于大家进行交流和分享。因为疫
Michanza Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College and ICCM to organize this international webinar on drone UAV. Drone is formerly known as Unmanned Aerial Vehicles or Unmanned Aircraft System. It can be applied in range of civilian roles including search and rescue, surveillance, traffic monitoring, weather monitoring, firefighting, videography, agriculture, personal use, drone-based photography, delivery service. And it is the right time now for us to make citizens and the students to view the world from the space especially in understanding the climate change and environmental disaster. This activity really meet the seven priority areas of SIMEO. For example, adapting 21st century learning among school students. SIMEO Rexon aim to become a pioneer to uphold learning on space science and technology exploration amongst school students. This international cloud computing webinar on drone technology is a part of the soft launching of the establishment of the Simulaxum Space Science and Technology Education Hub within the Simulaxum campus to strengthen its rules as a science, mathematics and technology training center Seymour Axum is committed to providing an avenue to explore space science and technology for students and educators. Seymour Axum wishes to promote amazing fun learning for students to stimulate their interest in learning about space science education through the use of technology as learning tools. I hope that the students and educators can gain fruitful knowledge from this webinar. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Nicole. So next, let us invite Dr. Xiao Chengping, the Chief Advisor of ICCCM for giving a speech. Dr. Xiao, please. 大家下午好 Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I would like to welcome you for attending this international collaborative webinar on the topic of UAV industry development and professionals training. It is a pleasure to see that despite the pandemic, we are still carrying out learning exchanges frequently across countries and institutions online. I believe that our determination and enthusiasm for advances would definitely make positive contribution to society, education and talent nurturing. 此次的培训由我们马来西亚国际文化交流中心长沙航空职业技术学院长沙航空职业技术学院主管外事工作校领导
东南亚教育部长组织科学与与数学教育区一中心主任 Dr. Shah Jahan bin Anasa Kuti， 课题讲师陈律教授以及各校重要成员的出席，表示诚挚的感谢，也感谢所有 ICCCM 团队。合作方成员对本次的培训的帮助，确保其顺利进行。The event today is jointly organized by us, International Cultural Communication Centre Malaysia, and Changsha Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College, and Simo Raksam. On behalf of the International Cultural Communication Centre Malaysia. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the following leaders. They are Ms. Yan Chan, Vice President of Department of Foreign Affairs, Changsha Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College; Dr. Sha Jia Han, Center Director of Simo Raksam, and the speaker of today, Professor Chen Lu, as well as all ICCCM members. And representatives from the organizing institutions, thank you for your efforts in preparing this event and ensuring its smooth running. 在这里，我也简单介绍一下马来西亚国际文化交流中心。我中心，英文简称为 ICCCM， 总部是在马来西亚吉隆坡。以中国成都、泉州、南京等多地设立了办公室。我中心主要从事政府交流、商业交流以及教育交流。教育板块是我中心目前的主要合作板块。政府交流和商业交流主要是为促进教育方向的发展。目前。我中心与全球四十二个国家的当地政府、教育部门、中资企业、当地行业协会、当地高校等等，有不同程度的合作。I would also like to briefly introduce the International Cultural Communication Centre Malaysia, which is known as ICCCM in short. It is based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. With offices in Chengdu, Quanzhou, Nanjing, and several other locations in China, at present, ICCCM dedicates its services mainly in governmental, business, and educational cooperation and partnership. With educational cooperation as our core service portfolio, built upon the facilitation of governmental and business cooperation, as of now, our center has. Cooperated with local governments, education departments, Chinese-funded enterprises, local industry associations, universities, and so on in 42 countries around the world at various level. 截止二零二一年，我中心已经与世界各国的六千多所高校建立了合作关系。在中国，目前拥有六百多所合作院校，同时，在海外的中资企业是我中心的重点合作方向。我们常常讲，我们做的是教育合作，服务的是社会与企业。我们希望有更多的中国高校一起，共同培养，懂中文。熟悉中国文化、会中国的技术的当地本土化人才，同时也培养一批懂当地语言、当地文化的中国国际化人才，为走出去的中资企业和中国国际化发展需求提供强有力的人才支撑和人才保障，同时。啊，我中心在马来西亚和柬埔寨也致力于实体办学。
By 2021, ICCCM has established partnerships with over 6,000 universities around the world and currently has over 600 partner institutions in China. In the meantime, we focus on collaborations with Chinese-funded enterprises overseas. We often position what we do as providing services to the society and enterprises through educational cooperation with the supports from more and more Chinese colleges and universities, we hope to cultivate foreign talents who are equipped with good knowledge of Chinese language, <clears throat> culture, and technology, but also to groom a group of Chinese talents who are both internationalized and localized in foreign countries, languages, and cultures, providing a strong talent support to the Chinese-funded enterprises who are going abroad and meeting the needs of China's development worldwide. Meanwhile, our center is also committed to the establishment of schools in Malaysia and Cambodia. I hope that today's training is not only to the content of the content, but also to the content of the content in the future of our and 所有參與者都能在學生上更添收穫滿載而歸。謝謝大家. We hope that this webinar will not only promote the sharing of this particular topic of today, but also promote the exchanges and cooperation between our institutions in various professional fields in the future. I hope all participants may gain more knowledge and return home with fruitful results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Xiu. So before we start the webinar, let us take a group photo together. So everyone, please turn on your camera. I will take the photo in the count of three. So everyone get ready. Three, two, one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your cooperation and thank you for the leaders from Changsha Aeronautic Vocational and Technical College. 感谢长沙航空职业技术学院的领导们出席今天的活动。现在让我们开始今天的线上研讨会吧。Now, let us continue to the main part of today's webinar. Before we begin, I would like to remind the audience that you will have the opportunity to submit your questions for our speakers today by typing your questions into the chat box at the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentations, and then we will collect the question. Sorry, we will collect the questions to be addressed during the Q and A sessions at the end of the presentations. To start the webinar sessions, first of all, I would like to introduce our speaker, Professor Chen Lu. Professor Chen Lu engaged in teaching UAV applications technology and aircraft body structure repair, as well as the calculations and design of aviation's high temperature structural materials. He had presided over the national project of professional group constructions of aircraft maintenance technology. He has published more than 30 academic papers in domestic and international journals. Without any more delays, let us welcome Professor Chen Lu to deliver his presentations on the topic UAV, Industry Development and Professional Training. Professor Chen Li, please. So we will wait a moment before our professor come back to meet. So to be, as a reminder again, for the audience, you may, you may ask your questions in the chat box and we will address the questions to our professor later. 
。好，那个呃，尊敬的沙加汉宾阿萨纳蒂库博士以及拉多肖宪平先生，各位亲爱的国际友人，大家下午好。Good afternoon to Dr. Sha Jahan from Small Rexam and Dr. Xiao Chenping from ICCCM Malaysia, dear participants and、uh, all audience, a very good afternoon to you. 呃，我是中国长沙航空职业技术学院航空装备维修工程学院院长陈律。今天将由我为大家分享一下我们中国以及全球无人机应用技术的现状。以及我们长沙航业就无人机应用技术人才的培养情况，向大家分享。I'm Professor Chen Lu from the Dean of School of Aeronautics and Electrical Engineering from Changsha Aeronautical Vocational and Technical College, CAVTC,、uh, in China. So now I will share with you my presentations regarding the status of UAV technology applications and professional trainings from a China's perspective. We have three aspects. The first one is the development of the aviation industry in the world. The basic situation. 第二个是中国。Sorry, who is my line having an issue? She is Changsha there. Okay, all right. So, so let's、uh, give them. So, yep.、Yeah. For our audience, please wait a moment. I will check the issue with the Changsha. So as a reminder, later we will give a feedback form. Our participants will need to fill in the feedback form to get the e-certificate. The link will be given later, so please stay tuned. Ah, Chen Jiao Shou, you 那边好了的话，您同我说。出来了吗？嗯，有了 ，PT 有了。OK。首先，我们讲讲这个从全球的无人机行业发展的现状啊，我们来分享一下一些基本的情况。以无人机市场啊，无人机市场有这么几个方面。一个是涉及到我们的这个呃硬件方面，硬件这里面呢分为两大类型，一种是我们的军用无人机，呃，它涉及到我们的这个军用无人机的装备以及配套的地面的工作站，呃，辅助指导控制我们的无人机进行特殊的一些军队的作战任务，这是第一个方面。My presentation is covering the following three aspects. Number one,、uh, we will talk about the status of UAV industry development in the world. And number two, we will look into the status of UAV industry development in China. And number three, we will have a brief overview of the program in applied technology of UAV in our college. So, starting from、uh, the first topic, we will look into the current landscape of UAV industry in the world. We first need to look at the market size. So, when we talk about the market size of UAV,、uh, firstly, we will look at the first component on the hardware perspective. So, in terms of hardware,、uh, UAV markets are 
focusing on these two areas of usage. One is for military usage, and the second is for the civil commercial usage. 在我们这个军用无人机领域呢，那我们本次这个分享啊，我着重讲述从民用消费级工业、消费级以及工业级无人机来我们作为重点的一个的内容。那么，对于民用消费结构本身部分。电机、螺旋桨、配套的任务载荷等等。Our focus of today will be more to focus on UAV for civil and commercial usage rather than on military usage。特别是配套的任务载荷部分，根据无人机应用领域的不同。所配套的任务载荷分别不同。目前，在中国国内以及全球，涉及到的无人机的行业应用领域达到六十多种。Since UAV are having different purposes, dedicating to different usage, differentiating from military usage and civil commercial usage. So, because of the differences between the two. It will make a difference in terms of what type of UAV it will be being、uh, configured, or in terms of adding devices and equipments on them. So, in terms of the configuration for UAV, which are used in civil and commercial scenarios,、uh, we see that、uh, this kind of technology are. Having more than sixty kinds of、uh, technologies and existing in the world nowadays. 那么，根据不同的应用领域，配套一些不同的任务载荷，例如有我们的用于航拍、摄像头，对吧？用我们的农业的纸保，我们的我们的喷喷头、药箱，利用了我们的这一个测绘。等等一些领域里面，都分别有其相对应的配套的一些任务装备和载荷。So civil used UAV technology, the most common applied scenario we have seen are in terms of aero photography, in agriculture applications, and also in terms of landscape、uh, mapping. 第二个部分就是我们的软件部分。对于我们专业的无人机，它有其专业的无人机的软件，有开基本上啊，我们的软件都是开放式的无人机应用软件。对于我们的软件里面的核心部分，是我们的飞控的软件，以及辅助任务控制的软件，例如有我们的空地空空地协同的。有我们飞机与飞机、无人机、无人之间的协同的等等这些方面的呢，飞行控制的软件。In terms of software, uh, for UAV, we noticed that, uh, it requires specialized UAV software. Most of them are open UAV application software, and those software are represented by remote controlling software application, which coordinate. Um, the drone itself with the base stationed on ground、uh, of the operators. So now I will share a video clip with you. So now. So now I will share a video with you featuring two UAV、uh, vehicles, which demonstrate a kind of software that coordinates devices between the controlled operator on ground. As the video shows, currently this drone is powered by 10 UAVs. 
我们面向。If you can see it from the video clip, you will notice that uh, what has been demonstrated is a software that allows unmanned or unpiloted uh, aero vehicle to operate in air. I think we are having an internet issue from Changsha. So for the audience, please wait a moment. Um, yes, as a reminder again, we will send a feedback form link for you guys. And please remember to fill in the feedback form to get the e-certificate and also for our improvement. Okay. Okay. 这这段视频展示的是我们这个机群啊，集体作业的时候去完成一些特殊的任务的时候的一个展示场景。它主要反映的核心技术就是在于我们的空地协同和机机之间的协同关系。核心的核心的技术就是我们的飞行控制软件。So the video that I share with you just now, it is a demonstration of how we use a software of UAV to coordinate a group of UAV drones to uh, coordinate with each other in air to perform uh, operational tasks. And the third aspect, we will look into the resources required for UAV. Resources分为三个小部分啊，就我们无人机的培训。面向我们行业开展无人机的培训，是我们一个很大的一块资源。培训我们的无人机的飞手，培训我们无人机的装配与调试的这些工作人员，培训我们的无人机的设计、制造以及研发人员，为无人机的市场啊提供有力的人才支撑。In terms of resources that required in the UAV industry, we understand that. It is very important to look into the aspect of UAV training and service, applied technology for UAV technology, and also uh, UAV related products. So one of the key elements, it is to understand the essentialness of training to qualified uh, UAV flying pilots to operate UAV in air for operation, and also the related technicians or mechanics in terms of maintaining UAVs, as well as uh, professionals in designing and renovating uh, uh, to design uh, UAVs. All of them are essential towards the maturing and development of UAV in the market. 第二个方面就是我们的无人机的一些应用技术，对于我们无人机的应用领域里面，每一项我们的应用领域里面都有其核心的应用技术。刚才我讲到，涉及到的应用领域里面有六十多项，那么每一项任务里面都会都有其应用领域的核心的应用技术，其中重中之重就是我们的飞行控制软件。
As we have uh, already understand that a key part of UAV development is relying on the UAV technology. And as we also understand that currently in terms of the application scenario of UAV technology, we are looking at at least 60 kind of different applied scenarios. So we do understand that by having relevant technologies to support different usage, it is crucial. And one of the crucial technology required in UAV, it is the control system. and in terms of UAV related product developments, we are talking about the hardware, hardware mostly. For example, the main body that built up the body of the UAV and also relevant components that are used to build a UAVs and also including the battery, the engine, different kind of components we have seen uh, for UAV uh, construction. So all of these components are also a key part in terms of uh, the commercializing of UAV in the market. In the global market, drones are gradually penetrating from a consumer product to applications in all walks of life, and the market size of UAV is steadily expanding. According to research data released by Drone Industry Insights, the global drone market in 2020 will be about 22.5 billion US dollars. 到去年年底,2021年已经达到了256亿美元,预计到2026年能够达到489亿美元的规模。um, the size of the market sales or market scale for UAV in the global, mar uh, global market has been steadily increasing as you have seen from the slide. Diagonal方面,从我们市场环境以及技术方面去发现我们的问题的发展的话,其中有一个无人机行业的专利的申请受理情况很能够说明我们的问题。on the other side, to further testify the booming of UAV market and technology, we can also observe the trend, the rising trend on the number of UAV patents applications that are being filed. In 2021年1月到8月,全球无人机行业的专利申请的数量和专利授权数量分别为4398项和631项。from January to August 2021, the number of patent applications and the number of patents granted in the global UAV industry were at 4,398 and 631 respectively, with an authorization rate of 14.35%. As of August to the, uh, as of August, this is the figure that we can see in the chart here. 截止到2021年的8月27日,全球无人机的行业专利申请数量已经达到了8.72万项。So as of August 27, 2021, the number of patent applications in the global drone industry is reaching the number of 
这个目前的这个专利的申请的处于状态来分析看，处于受审中和有效状态这两者的数量达到 3.12 万项和 5.46 万项。占全球无人机专利总量的百分之三十六和百分之六十三。Most of the global UAV patents are in the reviewing or valid status, with the total number of UAV patents being at thirty-one thousand two hundred and fifty-four thousand six hundred, respectively, accounting for thirty-six percent and sixty-three percent of the global UAV patents. 这个数据充分说明，最近一两年，无人机已经成为全球一个热门的行业。So based on all these figures, we understand that UAV is indeed a booming industry in the world nowadays. 其中，其中涉及到的一些无人机的。使用新型专利和发明专利的比重尤其尤其比较大。So in terms of the technology compositions,、uh, we have seen in UAV, we understand that most of the patent types are largely on inventions and also、uh, utility models. They account for the largest percentage. 还可以从我我们。全球无人机行业技术发展的专利申请上看的话，我们发现无人机目前攻克的一些难题，主要体现在无人机基站。We, if we look into the、uh, patents that are mostly used in the industry, we understand that the most the most frequently cited Patents are revolving around、uh, the base station technology and also the the、uh, battery technology. 那么无人机基站主要是去去去解决我们无人机的飞行控制的突出凸显的问题。So base station technology is mostly revolving on the flight control of UAVs. 排在第二的。它解决的是我们无人机的续航问题。无人机驾驶飞行器的电池充电装置利用与公用电力线相关的电池厂产生电能，以对能源进行感应充电。这个专利，呃，排在第二，也充分反映我们整个无人机行业里面对无人机的续航能力需要得到尤其的突破和解决。As we have seen from the table here, the second most cited article of patents are on the electromagnetic field associated with utility power lines generate electrical energy for inductive charging of energy sources. So this、uh, technology is mostly revolving around battery life for UAV, which are crucial to support UAV operations by having more durability. Uh, of to support the vehicle in flight. From this being used to排排在前十名的啊前十位的，基本上反映了我们整个无人机行业里面急需解决的一些突显突显的问题。So from another perspective, when you look at the top ten、uh, technology cited, a patent cited. Those are also areas indicating where it needs most talents and developments to push the industry of UAV forward. From our 2021 global aerospace industry hot technology awards to analyze, it can also show the current aerospace technology needs to be addressed. Also, if we look at the Top ten technical hotwords of UAV in the world. We can also get a sense of develop developmental needs in UAV industry. These ten-ranked hotwords are aerospace, aerospace management, aerospace transfer, aerospace transfer, aerospace transfer, aerospace transfer, aerospace transfer, aerospace transfer. So the top ten technical hot words includes words like aircraft image processing, electric transmission line, wireless communication, 
electronic equipment, neural network, measurement method, helicopter, mounts, and control system. 为了要继续优化无人机飞行的能力，使其越来越智能，这不仅对科学技术研发团队提出了更高的要求，也对无人机的行业发展带来不断的突破和新生力，是推动我们无人机行业向上更好发展的原动力。UAV has a lot of room to play in various industries in the future. We should continue to optimize the configuration and devices of UAV in flight and adopt more precise and accurate technology to make it more and more intelligent. This not only push forward higher requirements for the professional teams in science and technology of R&D, but also brings constant breakthroughs and new vitality to the development of UAV industry which is the driving force to promote the better development of UAV industry. Third,无人机市场对于人才需求的状况有从四个方面,首先排在第一的是我们的职业的飞手,飞手是我们无人机行业的排头兵,站在行业的第一线。so now we look into the talent demands, the condition of talent demands in the industry. As we notice in this uh, slide, we understand that the fundamental ground are supported by professional flying operators. They are the ones that are at the very front line of the UAV industry and the professional flying technology can make the field of UAV operation wider and wider. So currently in China, professional UAV drone operators are required to be trained by authorized institutions and to pass authorized examination in order to receive relevant certificates to pursue this career. So based on the current figure, we noticed that currently in China, the certified drone operator are existing the number of 100,000. So when we look at another layer, we notice that another area of technicians or mechanics are mostly required in UAV are those uh, working on debugging, maintenance, and repairs. They are the one very, very crucial to ensure the safe product of equipment, uh, maintenance for the vehicles, and the demand for this group of talents has been surging in the industry. Sorry, Professor, I cannot uh, hear you.
to my our participants, please wait a moment. So our speakers will come back to us in short. So as a reminder, we will share a link later for you guys as a feedback form. Please remember to fill in the form and it is for the e-certificate purpose and it is also for our improvement in future. For our participants, please wait a moment before we can get our speakers back to us.可以看到吧？正确的，看到了，看到了。对，刚刚你们画面了。对，你们刚刚我们这边是一直是有有，本来一直是有画面，但是你们远程控制在操作PPT，然后可能动了我电脑的设置啊，看了查看，然后最后就
。对呀、啊，之前我们就是那、呃、正在要要转到这个 PPT 的时候，转还没到这一张，准备转到这一张的时候，你们就接手控制了我的电脑。嗯，老师，如果有还是有人这样呃申请要控制您的电脑的话，您不要按接受，您不要理他就可以了。是是你们那边的专业人员操纵的吗？还是怎么回事呢？我认为应该是出了一些技术上我们无法控制的问题。但是如果有如果有同样的情况，那么您就不需要理会，您可以直接直接继续您的操控。啊，呃，陈教授，呃，我们刚刚是在那个人才那边的第二层，就是倒数第二层，对。对对讲到了我们这个，我们装备无人机装备的调试、维修、维护师，对吧？对对，是的。这个讲完了哦。啊，对，这个讲完了。哦，第三个第三个层级就是我们的行业应用的人才。我们无人机企业里面需要能够驾驶无人机且对该行业有深入了解的这些专家，这类人才需要对行业的沉淀与积累。它往往是多年来企业进行培养需求的一个重要的对象。So let's continue. When we talk about the talents most required in the industry, now we move up another layer. So another layer above what we have mentioned earlier, now we look into the industry application talents that are most needed. They are the experts who can fly drones and have a deep understanding of the industry for a long time. So this group of seasoned, uh, experienced expert in the in the target in the industry, they are the most important target of demand by corporates by business institutions. They are in high demand. 前面讲到的这个行业应用类人才，已经是我们无人机随着这个发展已经达到了六十多个领域。我相信这是学生。我相信，随着以后的发展，这一类这一类的行业会越来越多，需求的人才也会越来越多。So those are the talent that we have seen that are most needed in the industry, and also the talents who can innovate in terms of product research and developments are at the top layer of demand as well. So this group of talents are what needed to be groomed the most, and they are the scarcest resources uh, that we need to cultivate. Uh, for enterprises and in institutions and vocational in uh universities. Uh, 最后也是最高一个级别的就是我们的产品研发创新类人才。这类人才在产品研发创新方面去发展我们的聪明才智，让我们的这个无人机的行业领域越来越多，也是市场上最为稀缺的资源。So as mentioned earlier. Uh, the last layer that we would like to explain about are those who can develop products and to work on product innovations、uh, on UAV. These four types of people make up a pyramid-like human pyramid structure. So we call this structure of talent demands a pyramid of talent、uh, demands in the industry of UAV. So this is the one that I would like to elaborate just now. 啊，这是第一个方面啊，我们全球的这个无人机这个行业的一个基本现状。那么对于中国无人机行业的发展现状，我也从以下几个方面进行分享。So what we have discussed about just now was about、uh, the status of development in UAV in the group. So now we look into the status of development in terms of China. 中国无人机的这个市场规模比较突突集中发展的是从我们二零幺七年以来，民用无人机市场规模受益于我们行业发展以及我们国家政策的大力支持，中国民用无人机取得了高速的发展，逐渐成为全球无人机行业重要的板块之一。So in terms of China in the civil UAV market. In recent years, thanks to the development of the industry and the strong support of national policies, China's civil drones 
have reached rapid development and gradually become one of the important sector of the global drone industry. Data shows that the market size of China's civil UAV industry has increased from 7.9 billion yuan in 2017 to 36.1 billion yuan in 2020, with a compound annual growth rate of 65.9%. 中国无人机的市场已经占据到全球的百分之七十左右。So it is estimated that the market size of China's civil UAV market will reach 45.3 billion yuan in 2020, and China's UAV patent applications has now already accounted for 70.58% 70 of the global total UAV patent applications. 从全球来看，排第一是我们的中国，其次是美国。美国无人机专利申请达到了总专利量的百分之十二点六二，韩国、日本排名第三和第四。全球无人机行业专利申请数量前十申请公司，中国占据了九家。as we can see from the graph here, it shows that the number one patent applying country the ranking, China is uh, the first ranking and followed by uh, United States. Uh, the patent, the number of patent application for UAVs in the US is accounted for about 12.62% of the total number of patent application in the world. And then followed by South Korea and Japan at the third and fourth place. And also when we look into the top 10 UAV industry patents applying companies in the world, nine of them are Chinese companies. So as of the data we gathered uh, by August 2021, the number one patent applying company in China is this one, the first one, Shenzhen Dajiang Innovation Technology Company. So this data only represents UAV patents that are used in civil and commercial uh, scenarios. It is not including those for military usage. So just now we talk about there are at least 60 applied scenario for UAV applications. So what are they? Here is a short summary I have made to make it simple for us to understand. From 小学生开始兴趣爱好，到中学学生发展，再到高职高专同台竞技，最后到大学应用研究。At present, UAVs are widely used in China, from consumer UAVs to industrial UAVs. So consumer drones could be easily seen as hobbies in primary schools nowadays, to learning and developments in middle schools to uh, further down to competitions in higher vocational colleges. So specially configured industrial UAV drones, they can be used for agricultural and forestry spraying, supply distribution, and atmospheric sampling, etc. 
农农村大地里面，最后我们的物流最后一公里有望采用无人机的方式走完我们物流发展、物流快递业的最后一公里。In terms of UAV applications in logistic, we have seen that this use uh, in logistic cargo distribution has been in, in increase in recent years, especially by delivering supplies to remote area in rural area. Those are the key contributions that UAV can achieve. UAV technologies also playing crucial contributions in the area of atmospheric sampling and artificial rainfall. Using our solar platform, through adding some solar systems, we can use our rural sampling testing, photography, exhibition, exhibition, broadcast broadcast. 新闻拍摄、电影拍摄、婚纱拍摄影，利用我们的安全防护里面，可以检查我们的灾情、火情、指挥调度、反恐、维稳、即时即读、交通巡逻、边境巡逻，特别是在我们最近几年的疫情防控方面，也起到了一定的作用。When UAVs are equipped with specialized imaging equipments, they are able to perform the following duties. Firstly, in agriculture and forestry, they can use for plant monitoring or fixed point quantitative fertilization. In terms of aerial photography, we can see it used for sports and event concerts and shows, advertisement, news and movie filming, as well as wedding photography. In terms of the application in security, we have seen it being used for disaster inspection, command and dispatch, anti-terrorism and safeguarding, anti-smuggling and anti-drug, in traffic patrols and border patrols. And also what is uh, worth noticing is that in the recent two years of the pandemic, UAV also plays a crucial role in monitoring uh, 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 pandemic-related measure to give relevant supports. Currently, in our global electricity industry, it has also achieved a good effect. Electricity surveillance. Before, it was used by human workers in the field of the Transcription Center in the Great Wall of China to collect electricity and safety measures. 电力巡检采用无人机的方式，节约了成本，降低了风险，提高了效能。So in terms of UAV's application on electricity supply, we can see it being used for electric power planning and also electric power facilities inspection. This is very important to know that prior to the use of UAV, all of the inspection work are mainly conducted by humans and. Very often, those scenarios are very risky and they require long-distance traveling uh, in hostile environments and bad weather conditions. So with UAV being in action, it actually helps a lot by reducing all these risks and save more uh, manpower and deliver more higher efficiency and safeties. So in the case of China, nowadays, um, in terms of working on electric power facility inspections, we are seeing it moving towards um, complete usage of UAV operation rather than relying on manpower. In other areas, uh, such as city planning, resources exploration, water conservancy monitoring, landscape mapping, pipeline inspection, etc., all of these are areas where UAV can come in in great help. In so 
So it is fair to say that the trend and the development of UAV in the future, it is on the rise and it will be used in a lot of scenarios that human will need it uh, the most. And because of the talent demands that is uh, so huge in the market, it requires uh, educational or relevant enterprises and institutions to supply with the relevant uh, resources. 在这里, 我着重点讲讲几个比较特殊的行业应用领域. And here I would also like to brought to you some highlights on the key applied area and fields of uh, drones technology. 例如, 无人机的发展将引领一场勘测领域的革命。无人机勘测它具有设备投入低、测量均均均都高、使用灵活、灵活、使用范围广、维修、保养方便、使用费用低廉、配套设施简单等优点，将大大减少野外测量的工作量。Another key area for UAV to de develop, it is very essential in terms of landscape surveying and mapping. Because of the advantages that we have seen by using UAV, they will produce lower cost in equipment and produce higher measurement accuracy, produce higher flexibility, and deliver a wider range of applications. And by having more convenience maintenance, producing lower cost and require simple supporting facilities. 都可以採用無人機的三維掃描方式取得數據,會製成我們的城市三維地圖. With the development of more and more bigger cities, it puts higher demands on 3D mapping. So with UAV technologies, uh, they are able to map a large landscape in a very efficient and accurate manner by producing accurate 3D dimensional model results and uh, landscaping statistics. Also, another scenario we must not neglect are emergency situations where UAV can come in to help with urgent situations and also to solve complicated uh, environmental obstacles and challenges. So they will be helpful in terms of making uh, inspection data to aid rescue decision-making by quickly forming a landscape mapping to deliver crucial data and also uh, situational information. Also, in terms of smart city, so smart city is the advanced form of city driven by data, which is also to achieve the deep integration of information industrialization and urbanization in order to construct a digital city of geospatial information based on real world 3D models and electronic maps. Also, 
震慑相机或激光雷达等传感器，可高精度的获取原像各地段的地形、地貌特征，为我们公路的勘测设计。高铁线路的规划提供可参考的有用的地理信息价值。In terms of highway survey and design, as well as high-speed rail line planning, UAB will work and contribute towards、uh, working on terrains along a highway or high-speed rail line that is often complicated. So at this time, the mapping accuracy it is demanding. The use of UAVs. Will equip with sensors such as auto cameras and LIDAR, can obtain topographical and geomorphical features of various sections along the route with high precision. 目前我们中国一直在追求工业现代化、农业现代化。无人机的发现、无人机的出现啊，在我们的农业、农林植保方面。已经取得了很大的突破，全面的这个农业的现代化，在无人机的帮助下全面实现。As pursuing the modernization in technology and industry has been a key state strategy that focus in China, so the implementation of UAV are exactly working towards to contribute a modernized scenario. For industry and agricultural usage. 截止到二零二零年，我国植保的无人机保有量已经突破了十五万架次，无人机植保的面积超过了十八亿亩，在无人机植保技术及应用领域已经超越了日本，成为全球领先的地位。So noticeably, by 2020, the number of plant protection drones in China has exceeded the number of 150,000, and the plant protection area of drones has exceeded about 120 million hectares. In the field of unmanned plant protection machine technology and applications, China has surpassed Japan to become a global leader. 中国目前在农业领域已经基本构建了智慧农业生态系统。So basically, in China now it has entered an era of modernization of agriculture. 在播种、施肥、在饲养等方面，都实现了采用无人机来作业。In terms of agricultural activities such as fertilizations, seedings, and irrigations, all of this can be implemented and performed by UAV technologies. 采用六项全雷达系统，可全天候的、全视角的感知障碍物及周围环境，无惧尘土、光线的侵扰，具备自动、自动的绕绕障。以及仿地飞行功能，充分保障我们的作业安全。通过前后双摄像头、双探照灯，配合七二零避障雷达，轻松完成夜间的农林作业。So when drones are equipped with, uh, configurations or devices like six directional radar system, they can sense obstacles and the surrounding in all environments. Under all types of weathers and from all kind of visual angles, without fear of dust and light intrusion, so they will have the function of automatic obstacle avoidance and ground emitting flight, which fully guarantees the safety of operations. So with also double front and rear cameras, double searchlights, and also the 720 degree obstacle avoidance radar. They can easily help drones to perform、uh, at night. At night. 在第三个方面啊，无人机进行大气的一个状态监测方面也开始投入运用。无人机采用无人机进行大气的监测，它具有灵活性高。无人机不需要驾驶员随时起飞，受场地限制小。第二，机动性强，针对环境应急事件。无人机可以立刻对事故区进行实时全景的监控。第三，适用性广
可应用于野外、城市等各种不同的环境场合。第四，图像清晰，数据准确，无人机多维低空拍摄和传感数据，可生成多光谱和高光谱的图像。和直观全面的反映大气的污染状态。Thirdly, we can see that UAV are also used for at,、uh, atmospheric monitoring.、Um, they have the following advantages that we have seen in UAV. Firstly, UAV are having a high flexibility.、Um, it needs no drivers. It can take off at any time, and it requires、uh, less. Uh, it it is less restricted by the surroundings, and also secondly, it has strong mobility that it can immediately monitor the accident area in real time, and also、uh, in the event of emergency, environmental emergencies. And thirdly, drones can be used widely in different applications,、uh, as what we mentioned in various environments and scenarios, also like in wilderness and in different city areas. And lastly, UAV are also good at producing clear images and、uh, accurate data. For example, it can be used mostly to shoot、uh, photos for、uh, data that are at low altitude. It can generate multi-spectral and hyper-spectral images, which can be intuitive and comprehensive. 第四个方面。无人机在公共安全应用领域也取得了很多突破的应用。无人机空中平台搭载图像、红外、激光、气体等多种载荷装备，一方面采集监控、监测对象，对事故现场拍摄、演变这一些信息；另一方面，可以实现多维度的全面分析、风险信息，提供数据。是大海量数据，在突发事件的事前、事发、事中、事后阶段，发挥着关键的支撑作用，提升我们的技术创新实力，以及完善我们的工作机制，持续做到我们提质增效、技术升级、自行判断等这些目标任务。So in terms of UAV applications for public safety. We have seen that it is being able to use for scenarios like emergency responses, investigation and arrest, daily patrols, and anti-drug investigations, etc. So the strength of UAV in this area we have seen、uh, by in UAV it is that it is able to process and deal with comp complicated data and scenarios, and it can overcome the issues. That normally human face in poor communication or traffic、uh, obstructions and other、uh, complexities, and with relevant technologies and software built on、uh, UAVs,、uh, they are able to capture key uh, information uh, through images and footage for、uh, analysis in order to support the relevant rescue team or policing team. To conduct a relevant measure to solve the issues in the current scenarios. In some emergency situations, in the investigation, collection, tracking, and monitoring of public events, especially in 2020 to 2021, to now, the c o r r e n 都已经发挥了很重要的作用。Hence, it is not hard to understand why the use of UAV,、uh, it is increasing more and more in terms of public safety and policing, as we have noticed in China during the year of 2020 to 2021. Drones are also one of the vehicles that being deployed to assist、um, COVID-19 uh, combating measurements and facilitating.、Um, Police patrolling in different aspects. 第五个方面，在我们无人机行业应用到我们的消防救援也已经全面铺开铺展开来。采用无人机可以实施城市的消防救援、急速侦查、掌控现场态势
，可以通过视频回传，实现前后方协同指挥，降低我们由火灾所带来的经济损失和人身安全。So another application of U uh, UAV uh, on fire rescue, we have seen that UAV uh, it is beneficial in terms of deliver rapid inspection operation to the site of uh, a disaster. It is able to control the scene situation and capture information and feedback to uh, the control center with a uh, uh, front and rear coordinated command. And video feedback camera, it can execute uh, by capturing information and delivering relevant solutions to the site. 通过采用无人机自动化的巡逻，来助力我们高效的森林防火灭火，高空视角助力我们的精准灭火。无人机也大显身手。In terms of forest fire prevention and extinguishing, UAV it is also very helpful with its high efficiency uh, to prevent by monitoring uh, the site uh, regularly and also to perform tasks at high altitude with visual angle um, to deliver footages and information back to the control center to aid precise firefighting. Hey, 实施野外走走私救援，面对自然灾害的救援，我们无人机也能够提供相应的一些信息数据，帮助我们快速的实施救援活动。Also, in terms of rescuing lost people in the wilderness, UAV it is very helpful by helping a res uh, rescued force to survey uh, the terrains. Uh, despite any challenging uh, circumstances, it can quickly locate um, the lost people in any location that it can cover. Us. 第六个方面，在我们无人机行业应用啊，应用到我们的电力系统里面。前面也讲到了哦，我们国家全面实施无人机来开展电力线路的规划。电力系统装置的施工验收、电网的日常巡检，都已经全面开展，使用无人机来实施的作业。As we have mentioned briefly earlier, that using UAV to、uh, work on areas like electricity supplies. So this is once again that we would like to mention. UAV are very helpful in terms of、uh, helping a city to plan its Electricity planning to design its power grid by having it to survey the landscape and also to conduct、uh, frequent and routine、uh, power grid、uh, inspection and quality examination. So by having UAV to replace human to deliver high risk and dangerous task in terms of、uh, safety inspection,、uh, etc. 尤其是在电网巡检。这个工作当中啊，因为我们的电力线路要跨越大山大河，跨越深山老林，对于电力巡检的时候，以往都采用我们的人驾驶直升机去进行巡检。由于直升机飞行的距离与我们的电网一定要保持一个合适的安全距离。这个安全距离往往是我们在电力巡检过程当中一个很大的安全隐患。采用无人机对电网设施和环境进行自动化、精细化的巡检，降低了我们工作的出错率以及我们直升机坠机的风险，大幅提高提升我们的工作效率。Once again, we need to understand.、Uh... Better that previously without UAV technologies, it is very dangerous and very challenging for human teams to、uh, go across difficult landscapes to reach、uh, different sites of、uh, power station and power tower to con to perform、uh, power grid inspections.、Uh, for example, one of、uh, the previous practice was to fly helicopters near to the power station tower to perform inspections.、Uh, inspections, but we must understand that by using helicopter, 
it requires a certain distance between the helicopter itself and the power facilities. Otherwise, it is easily triggering uh, safety issues or disasters. So prior to the use of UAV, we have seen a lot of safety accidents uh, resulted from hel helicopter incidents or this kind of issues related to uh, the inspection uh, task. So now with uh, the support of UAV, it greatly increased the safety measure and also conveniently improved the accuracy and the timeliness of data gathering. Hence, uh, it also produced better results uh, for our uh, power grid inspection work. Also, another aspect of having UAV to apply in terms of um, energy, it is very commonly being used in the oil and gas industry to uh, inspect stations and refineries to check at pipeline completeness and to manage them, and also to perform exploration works uh, to discover natural resources. So the 60 applied scenario where UAV are being used we are only briefly touching seven of them as of now. Disangan 主要体现在以下几个方面任务系统编程的人员 So with all the applied scenario that has been mentioned, it is not hard for us to understand why the talent demand in the UAV industry are so huge. So nowadays, uh, we must understand that there is a shortage of technical professionals in the industry. Um, only with certain aviation knowledge, it is not enough. Uh, what we call professional talents are those who are not only have the knowledge, but also the practical experience in the industry. And if we want to specify what are the occupation or specialized field in UAV that we can work towards to, we can see they are in the following uh, areas. For example, to work on equipment debugging, to work on maintenance and repairing of UAV vehicles, and also to perform photography professional, uh, professional photography uh, operations to capture ground image and to process those information. So those are the technicians that will be needed. And also in terms of technology specialist to perform flight control, on the ground to do remote control of UAVs to perform tasks, and as well as to work on ground station debugging and task system programming. And last but not least, all of these areas will require trainers in order to produce trainees and professionals. So trainer in all of these areas are also in great demand. <laughs> 比以往所有产业都要发展得快
，急需能够开拓行业应用以及研发产品的优秀的研发人才，这也是目前迫切需要的研发创新的人才。So drones are upgrading and updating rapidly than all other kind of products that we have seen in other industry. So it requires a wide range of applications uh, than any other that we would have expected. So for drones as a carrier that flies, uh, drone innovation is in desperate need of talented professionals who can develop industry applications, and also to work on product innovations and research and developments. With the platform of UAV industry, it, does not, it is not limited by your imagination. There are a lot of zooms that you can apply your skills and you can contribute towards. 第三个方面啊，三个大类，介绍一下我们长沙航空职院无人机应用技术专业发展的基本的概况。So now we enter the last part of the presentation, with which is to briefly introduce the program in applied technology of UAV in our college. 长沙航空职业技术学院在二零幺四年开设了无人机应用技术专业。它是中国高职院校首批开设无人机专业的高职院校。The UAV Applied Technology major opened in our college in 2014. It is also the first batch of higher vocational colleges in China to set up a program of UAV major. 无人机应用技术专业为我们军地共建共享、军民两用专业。无人机应用技术专业目前有三个培养方向：民用无人机方向、警用无人机方向以及陆航无人机四方方向。The UAV application technology major it is a military and civil uh dual purposed major, and the UAV application technology major is currently Uh, catering towards three training directions. The first direction is on civil UAV, and the second direction is on police UAV, and the third direction is on land aviation. So our institution is a fully government authorized institution to train and to certify professional UAV uh, professional technicians and uh, uh, practitioners uh, with our facility. As also one of the examination sport authorized examination center and training center for those relevant uh, candidates and talents. To briefly summarize. Uh, a strong faculty members that we have in the program of UAV application technology. Uh, we understand that we have a team of two professors, two PhD holders, four OPA professional certified trainers, and one national level best UAV drone flyer, and also one national level 
uh, award-winning instructor, and many more. So all of these excellent and outstanding faculty members and UAV professionals, they have lead students and construct teams to uh, enter into various competitions and uh, receive fruitful results and awards in the relevant fields. So all of them are also contributing towards uh, producing high-level publications and textbooks in the industry to train students. And they are also working actively with relevant industry uh, to align teaching with industrial needs. Tongua our college has a very unique positioning in the industry because of uh, we are the certified uh, training center and platform uh, authorized by the government. So the following three platforms are the roles that we are undertaking at the time being. Uh, we are China's Opel Civil Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Driver Training Institute and also uh, the relevant test center. And we are also China's Opel Civil UAV System Professional Engineer Training Institute. And we are authorized to uh, open relevant courses. And we are also one of the authorized provider of the OnePlus S. A uh, one plus X level driving professional skills talent certificate. Tongo, the Sango Pintai, Woman Zaisha, the Wurinji Yin Su Zhuan Yi Shuesen, Jiben Dolan Go, Kauchi Hoda, Xiang Yin, the Zia Zigurden, Yizen Su, Wei, Zou Ru Hang Ye, Chi Ye, Sahui, Tigong, Yo Xiao Hao Zhang. So because our unique strengths and positioning, it is not hard to understand that why it is that our students, most of our graduates are fully certified and qualified uh, for uh, industrial practices um, after the graduation. Mianji so let me also briefly introduce the training facilities and equipment in our institution, in our college. So our college has five classrooms for training UAV applied technologies with an area of 580 square meters to practice teaching venues and an outdoor flight field of 10,000 square meters, which meets the classroom requirements of relevant national standards and also meets the requirement of firefighting and emergency response. And our facility are also equipped with multimedia equipments to uh, facilitate and accommodate about 60 people to study at the same time. Tongsu 
所有的像取证的人员到校实施考证。Since、uh, we have mentioned earlier that we are the government authorized institutions to conduct training and examination of UAV、uh, professionals, hence you have you have seen here that in our teaching environments,、uh, it includes examination rooms、uh, for students to attend、uh, this kind of test in Hunan, and also、uh, to perform、uh, actual、uh, practical. Uh, examination and test in order to qualify、uh, for relevant certificates. 每一年，将近接待五千人左右的规模，在我们长沙航院来参加 AOP 民航无人机执照的考试。So roughly, uh, about five thousand plus of uh examination, uh, applicants. Uh, we are accommodating at least five thousand of them every every year to attend for the exam in OPA to be a certified UAV professional. 建有有标准的相关实训实习场地 We also have fields and a training base for a practical uh practices in UAV、uh, courses and learning. 能够培训航空产品、无人机产品装配调试、无人机操控技术、无人机维修技术相对应的相关工程师。And our training will include、uh, practices that to train mechanical engineering in、uh, UAVs and also. Relevant maintain and repair works、uh, on UAV vehicles. 能够考取无人机驾驶执照、教练员、机长、教员、系统工程师等职业资格证。And we are also able to train and qualify、uh, professionals who are aiming to be a professional drone、uh, pilot. Or drone、uh, flyer operators. 经过近八年的建设，无人机应用技术专业在教材、课程建设、在实训场地建设、在校企合作等方面取得了一系列的成果，充分证实我们校企帮扶。校企共建、校企合作，建有无人机产业学院。So with at least eight years of experience in education of、uh, applied UAV technologies, our institute has accumulated strong experience in collaborating with enterprises to align our teaching and training towards industrial needs. So it once again emphasizes our、uh, closely collaborations、well, with schools and enterprises in performing、uh, advanced and accurate level of、uh, teaching and training for the talents that are needed in the industry. 各位国际友人、朋友，今天我的分享暂时告一段落，谢谢大家。So, dear participants and dear listeners, this brings us to the end of this presentation, and my sharing will end here. And thank you very much. 最后，我提一条想法啊，如果有意愿与我院开展无人机应用技术领域开展相关的学术交流，或者是任何形式的合作，请大家联系我。And at the very end, I would also like to、uh, call for uh, your uh, interest. If you are interested in joining our institution to study UAV-related technologies and courses, please feel free to contact me by、uh, the information, the contact information here, to discuss further and to get more information. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chen Lui. So, thank you, Professor Chen Lui, for the wonderful webinar. It was definitely an informative and knowledgeable sharing. And thank you all for the active participations. We will go ahead and take some time for the questions now. Just a reminder, you still can submit your questions through the chat box in your control panel. Meanwhile, kindly scan the QR code in the, on the slide later or click the link given in the chat box to fill in the feedback form. This e certificate will only be distributed to those who successfully submit the feedback form. Thank you. And now we will go to answer the questions submitted during the presentations. And it looks like we have received some questions here. So for the questions one, uh, Professor Cheng, how to optimize the stability of the drone due to the weather factor? Chenjiao 它是一个自我修订的过程，而不是我们人为的去操控它的过程。就类似于我们的自动驾驶，它能够自动的去规避一些外界环境的扰动。哎，对于我们飞机而言，就类似于自动驾驶。对于我们无人机而言，它就是去
。那陈教授，那我们可以来看一下第三个问题，就是说如何在高中阶段实施编程学习作为一种教育工具 ？OK， 这个问题提的很好啊。目前在我们无人机的行业领域里面，广泛采用的一种比较流行的。呃，编程的语言是 Python。他看到吗？这我能看到吗？嗯，看到吗？看到啊。呃，就是呃，这本我们我们我们说的这个 Python 这个语言，已经在不仅其实不仅仅是在无人机行业领域，在很多呃工业智能化领域里面，都能够使用这一种语言进行编程，并且它这种编程语言。比我们常说的 C 加加啊 ，Visual C C 加加那种语言呢，更容易掌握，更通俗，更易懂。在高中阶段，对于有兴趣爱好的同学和学生，完全可以开始接触和实施，甚至初中阶段的学生也可以开始接触。Patient。I would like to say that this is a very good question. So, in order to answer this, I would like to suggest the following. Actually,、uh, the book that I'm holding right now it is a book about Python. So, this is a computing language that it is relatively or、uh, by comparison, it is much easier than other programming language such as C plus plus or Visual. So, this is a programming language that I would like to encourage students at.、Uh, Middle school level or even senior middle schools levels to start picking up to give it a try. 嗯，好的。So the next questions: Which program language do we need to code for the drone's hardware and software, and why drone programming is important, and how to improve the accuracy? 那陈教授，下一个问题呢，就是说，我们需要用哪一种编程语言来为无人机的硬件和软件来编程？那为什么无人机的编程很重要？要怎么样才能提高这个编程的精确度呢？嗯，刚才的回到第三个问题啊，其实第四个问题的第一个问题已经回答了，采用 Python。Okay. To answer question four, actually, the first half of question four has already been mentioned in our question three. So、uh, I do strongly encourage our interested students to try to start with、uh, the programming language of Python. 至于为什么无人机的编程很重要，我在分享的课件里面，在好几个地方都提到了一个飞控软件。Flight control software. 那么这个飞控软件，它能够是我们无人机在使用各个领域里面一个核心。它能够操控无人机的飞行，它是无人机的大脑。那么要不同领、不同的应用领域里面去做一些不同的作业，那么就需要不同的功能和作用。可见这个大脑，它的神经、它的指挥是很重要的，所以显得这个。编程，啊，开发这个飞控软件，开发这个这个程序，肯定是很重要的，因为它能够使我们无人机应用到不同的领域。目前我所了解的有六十多个领域，可能未来一年两年时间，这个领域可能会有上百种。每一种新的领域里面，可能对于飞控软件的要求都会有很严格、很严格要求不一样。那么这一类呃区别就在于很大程度在于我们的这个呃 flight control software. So to answer uh the second part of question four, that why drone programming it is important. So uh as we have learned from the presentation just now, drone technology it is mostly powered by the flight control software. So this is a component that equivalent to a brain in humans. So only by able to master the skills in software engineering, which is also through implementing programming, it allowed drones to 
applied its usage in different areas and scenarios. Like what I mentioned just now, currently in drone applications, we are seeing it being used in 60, over 60 kind of uh, applied cases. And I do believe that the cases of application will continue to increase as time goes. So by learning drone technology programming, it is actually enhancing uh, the capability of drones to perform different tasks as a brain in more and more scenarios. And the flight control software is what make the UAV smart and uh, intelligentized. 最后一个提到的如何提高其精确度必然导致我们的飞行控制的精度不能提高 So to answer the part on how to increase the accuracy level of drone, it is very important to understand that uh, the accuracy of drone operation, it is uh, supported by sensor technologies. Uh, for example, sensor of infrared and laser technologies. So to answer how to increase the accuracy of drone flying, it will be very important to make sure that these kind of sensors are well installed and are equipped with mature technology in order to be able to capture and deliver information for and from UIV, uh, UAVs. GPS。目前我们中国的北斗卫星导航的这个地理位置信息可以搭载北斗导航的基本模块。and also another way to increase accuracy of drone flying or operation, it is by uh, having accurate geographical uh, coordinations or uh, locationing. So this is greatly facilitated by the technology of GPS. So here I would like to suggest that technologies like uh, GPS, it is something that we can implement on UAVs. And it is also a software or technology resources that we should openly contribute and share uh, among uh, institutions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we will have another question. Are people are going to use the nuclear waste battery on the UAV in future? Uh, uh, Nuclear waste battery on UAV. 因为如果使用到对于我们的这个人身安全、国家安全造成一定的威胁。My uh, answer to this question is probably not, because this kind of chemical, uh, this kind of uh, substance, uh, you will pose dangerous to human health and also uh, sec uh, security, national defense security risks. Okay. So as an alternative, I do suggest that the future of using solar powered battery, uh, it is more promising. 
，现在有一些先进的技术，在这里呢也不便明说。呃，基本上的发展趋向是是利用我们的这个太阳能，持续的为我们无人机提供电源，让无人机的续航能力可以永远的不掉下来。Um, it might not be suitable to discuss、uh, the specific technology on so,、uh, in solar power in detail here, but I would like to say that、uh, using solar power, it is the future、uh, in terms of supporting UAVs with constant battery life for longer flight durations and endurabilities. So, in the research that we mentioned, the most relevant uses of solar power are the two most popular ones, one is 涉及到我们的飞控软件，尤其是涉及到我们无人机的续航能力，这两个是比较凸显的，也是比较急需解决的问题。其中，能源、电力我有望用采用我们太阳太阳能电池的这种方式得到解决，而我们的这个飞控软件，呃，基础的啊，基础的或者是民用级别的，可以用我们的 Patient 来解决。对于我们涉及到更高精度的军方的，这我也不便在这里细说。So,、uh, as we mentioned earlier, that one of the mostly cited patents or mostly used patents、uh, in the previous slide it is about、uh, the flight control softwares, and especially in the area of battery life、uh, research and development.、Uh, so, to to put it in a simple way. Uh, for civil and commercial usage,、uh, some of the technology, like what I mentioned earlier, by programming, it is enough to support a battery、uh, for a battery life for UAVs. But for higher level usage, like in terms of military usage, then、uh, more advanced、uh, technologies, resources like so,、uh, like solar power, will be involved. But this is another layer of topic that we are not going to discuss here. Thank you. 对，好的，谢谢老师。嗯、um, ，我们的下一个问题 ，the next question is， how is mathematics involved in the design of UAV products and the development of UAV technology？ 这个问题是说，呃，数学是如何参与无人机的产品设计和无人机的技术发展的？如何参与？无人机的产品设计和技术发展，嗯，就是数学在这两个方面上，它是如何贡献或者是发挥它的数学色？对，数学，数学，嗯，数学。哦、嗯，那这个数学如何参与进来的话，可能从这么两个方面啊。第一，我们的飞行空气动力学布局需要用的数学。对于无人机，它是一个小型的；对于民用和消费者都是小型的。它对于不同形状的、不同特殊要求的，它不像我们的这个军机哦，也不像我们的民用客机，它可以有很多 DIY 的这种设计，哎，满足不同的行业的需求。但是它符不符合空气动力学性能？它气动布局是不是最优的？这一些。设计和研发需要用到我们的数学。So to answer this question, mathematics will be very important in terms of、uh, performing aerodynamic calculations. To again draw on the UAV for civil and commercial usage,、uh, we can see that in terms of this kind of UAV design,、um, we can do a lot of DIY designs. Uh, compared to the challenging demands that you will see in military use of UAV, so when you、uh, have more、uh, flexibility to design civil use or commercial use UAV, then having a good knowledge of、uh, aerodynamic calculation, it is very important、uh, on how we can apply、uh, mathematics in this area. The other thing, for the UAV. 在不同的行业领域里面取得的一些原始的数据，对于后期的数据的处理，它可能需要用到数学。海量的数据怎么提取我们有用的价值，反映出相应的规律，需要用我们数学的方法
去拟合、去处理，得到我们有用的、有价值的信息。And the second aspect to answer this question, it is that、uh, UAVs also involve of capturing a large amount of data, so it will be important to process data accurately in order to produce valuable and insightful information. So this is also where we can use mathematics to generate these kind of results. 暂时就讲这两条吧。Okay, so、uh, I would like to just leave、uh, my my answer、uh, to these two、uh, for in terms of these questions. Okay, thank you, Professor. So the next questions: What topics in school mathematics are important for students to learn <coughs> in order to pursue a career in UAV technology? 这个问题问的是说，呃，为了从事无人机技术的工作，那学生在学校的这个学习中要学习哪些呃课程呢？这涉及到我们无人机应用技术专业的学生，当然我们有一套比较完整的呢人才培养方案。哎，这个呢，你如果说。你们需要的话，我可以分享给你们。呃，里面对于培养无人机应用技术专业人才，有一整套完整的课程体系。Uh, to answer this question, I'm speaking from a perspective of what is、uh, needed in、uh, in the situation of China,、uh, corresponding to the curriculum design that、uh, we produced. For the need of the industry and our students,、uh, if you wish to have more information on this area, uh, uh, I will I can share with you、uh, maybe in detail uh, in a、uh, different way.、Uh, so this is something、uh, tailored for what how the industry looks like in China.、Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether it will be fitting into what is needed in a different country or not. But we can further. Uh, discuss on this through、uh, later contacting. Out.、Hmm. So the next questions: How the first-person view drone can be used in our daily life? <coughs> Just me. Sorry.、Uh, what was the question again? So how how the first-person view drone? Can be used in our daily life. Third person view drone. First, first person view.、Oh, first person view drone. Okay. Ah,、uh, this question is about, is, 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 可以实现第一视角。So, uh, to answer this question, yeah, it is possible to operate drone with first-person view by a specific software and programming, uh, UAVs. Yeah, hope it answers. Okay. So, for the last questions of the day, what are the possible applications of S? Sorry, of artificial intelligence on UAV. Okay. Ah,、uh, 那陈教授，这是最后一个问题。啊、uh, ，他问的是人工智能在无人机上有哪些可以应用的方向？这个这个领域也太宽啊，太宽泛了。哎，刚才讲到了飞控软件啊，飞控软件它其实是讲到了它的这个大脑。是让我们的无人机有智慧，那么人工智能其实也是另外一种换了一种说法的一种一种说法啊，它其实相当于一种也在其他的领域里面叫人工智能，可能在我们无人机领域呢叫做叫做飞控飞行控制，呃，它操纵着无人机的一切的动作，那么人工智能。在其他领域里面，比方说工业机器人，它不也是操纵着我们的工业机器人的手臂嘛，对吧？它其实是可以进行划等号的。你要说无人机是不是工业智能
，它其实就是我们的工业制，呃，工业制的。嗯，不是不知道我这样解释合不合适？嗯 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，actually to answer this question, it is quite similar to what we have been discussing in the earlier questions. Uh, actually, when we say AI, in terms of AI in UAV, it is actually equivalent to the word of flight control software. So in UAV, uh, in the world of UAV, AI, uh, you can treat it as, you know, what is most needed in flight control software. Uh, so in order to answer this question, uh, let us recall what we have mentioned earlier, that uh, by having, you know, uh, relevant programming to facilitate flight control software. This is how artificial intelligence is being uh, implemented. And also the flight control software, it is what making a flying carrier smart. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. And thank you, Jocelyn. So before we continue uh, for the final parts of the day, we would like to thank the important representatives from Changsha Aeronautical Vocationals and Technical College and Senior Rexam. Besides, I would like to thank the speakers of today again, Professor Cheng Lu. That was a definitely an informative webinar. So thank you for bringing us with the webinar today. And I would like to thank to all the participants for attending this webinar and your active participation. And please remember to scan the QR code just now or click the link given in the chat box to fill in the feedback form. Um, your feedback is very important for our improvement as well as for the e-certificate proposed. At last, we hope to have more collaborations in the future. And the webinar for today ends here. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. See you next time. We have a chance to meet again. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 谢谢。谢谢老师。谢谢谢教授。辛苦了。没问题，感谢您。